Let G and F be surjective functions, where G maps elements from A to elements in B, and F takes elements from that same set B and sends them to the set C. So these are two surjective functions. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're going to prove that their composition f of g is also surjective. Remember that surjective functions are also sometimes called onto functions. A function g, for example, is surjective or onto if for every element y in the codomain b, there exists some element, we'll say x, in the domain that maps to that element y. So if a function is surjective, that means that for any element in its codomain, there is some element in its domain that maps to that codomain element. So that's what we want to prove about the composition f of g. I recently did a proof of a similar result for injective functions. If you haven't seen that or you're not familiar with the result, I definitely recommend checking it out. I'll leave a link in the description. The proof is very similar to the one we're going to do today, but I would say this one is a little bit tougher. Now I definitely recommend trying to prove this result yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. We'll basically just have to apply the definition of surjective functions function a few times and that will get us to our result. Hopefully you've done that, now let's jump into the proof. So consider our composition function f of g. Remember that function composition goes from right to left, so if we plug an element into this function, it's going to go through the function g first, and then it's going to go through f, which means the domain of this function is the domain of g, that's where elements start in the set A, and the codomain of this function is the codomain of F. That's where elements will end. So that's the set C. Let me redraw that arrow because it looks pretty ugly. All right, that's better. So the composite function f of g will take elements from a, the domain of g, then it'll send them to b, where they can then be put through the function f, which will send them to c, and that is the codomain of the function. So to prove this is surjective, we want to begin by taking an arbitrary element from the codomain. So we'll say take some element y from that codomain c. And of course, we want to show that there exists some element in A that this function will send to Y. So this function is made up of the composition of F and G. Which one of those functions sends elements to C? Well, that, of course, is the function F. F takes elements from B and sends them to C. And remember that C is the set containing Y. So then we might ask, does there exist an element in B that F will map to Y? And we know there is such an element because the function f is assumed to be surjective. So since f is surjective, we know there exists some element, we'll say x, in its domain, b, that's the domain of f, there exists x in b such that f of x is equal to y. So again, remember that we're assuming f and g are surjective functions. Thus, given any element in the codomain of f, we know there exists an element in the domain that f maps to that element y in the codomain. Alright, so x exists in the set b, and of course our function g sends elements to the set b. So then we might ask, does there exist an element in a that g will send to the element x? And just like we went over with f, we know there is such an element because g is assumed to be surjective. Since g is surjective, we know that there exists an element, we'll say x prime, in the domain of g, which is a, such that g evaluated at that element x prime is equal to the given codomain element x. So again, we assume that g is surjective, so we know we can find a domain element in a that will map to any given codomain element. And this element, x prime, is the key to our proof. We've identified this element x prime specifically to do exactly what we want. So what do I mean by that? Well, plug this element x prime into our composite function f of g. What's gonna happen? Well, let's take a close look. f of g of x prime, remember that x prime is in A, which is the domain of f of g, so we can plug x prime into f of g, what is this going to be equal to? Well, by definition of function composition, this is equal to f of g 
of that element x prime. Of course, we know that g of x prime is equal to x, so this is equal to f of x. That's just some substitution. But then we know that f of x is equal to y, so this is equal to y. Thus, cutting out all the middle equalities to just look at what we care about, we see that f of g of x prime is equal to y. We've just shown, basically by working backwards from f to g, that given any element y in the codomain of f of g, we can find this element x prime in the domain that maps to y. Thus, by definition of surjective, we've just shown that the composition f of g, which maps a to c, is surjective, which followed easily from our original assumption that the functions f and g are surjective. Now, of course, you may wonder, is the converse of this statement true as well? If we knew that f of g was surjective, would we be able to conclude that f and g are surjective? Let me know what you think about that down in the comments, and I'll do a video talking about it pretty soon. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove this fun result about the composition of surjective functions. We see that function composition preserves surjectivity. Pretty cool. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description. You too.